Hello friends, welcome back. Today I'm going to scrap this big guy here. As you can see, this is a 50 inch old TV. I'm not sure what the year of my manufacturer is. And uh, let's see what we can harvest from this big guy. And as you can see, this is a bit messy here. These are usual troubles for a practical man when he lives in an apartment. You know, it is not possible for me to get my all ideas into the casual plans. So this is what it is and I have to do all of this in this small cozy home. So let's begin. This is our TV. Samsung brand also it support 1080 resolution which is great I'm not sure what the year of manufacture is but it is pretty interesting such a great resolution and uh, I'm going to scrap this so let's start without any hesitating Ah, uh, let's see inside of this thing. It seems there is three lenses inside of it. Finally, I've opened up this big guy. You know, it's amazing, kind of complicated uh, system. There is just uh, front of me. It seems there is three cathodic tube here, which uh, come up and uh, send all that pictures which supposed to form on the front screen by these three lenses here and uh, as I can see here majority of this uh, electronic board here is a kind of brown PVC which does not contain that modern BGA chips and uh, there is some capacitors ceramic capacitors may contain some palladium and also uh, I have saw as I have saw before there is some uh, pellets inside this cathodic tubes which uh, contains sometimes some palladium I know that this is recommended to not break this cathodic tubes but uh, I don't care I try to do that safely under a, a good ventilation you know I'm seeking for those possible palladium so let's open some more screw here to see what we can get from this TV You know, it's interesting. These are lenses that I was talking about. Uh, they are dusty. And here is, this TV has an internal projector with a mirror which send the picture on this screen here. All right, we have fine first precious metal in this as you observe here there is gold plating on this AV sockets this is the first for sure element that we saw which contains some gold
Hey, look at that mirror. I found something on this mirror. It is written 2005. Probably this is the year of manufacture for this TV. This thing hasn't died in vain. It's gonna be useful, especially this screen here. I have some plans for this and also for these lenses. Let's start to see what we are we have here. It seems I was wrong. There is some chips in this guy. You can see here is a big quad IC chip. As you observe here, this green PCB has a higher quality for gold, and here this green PCB belongs to the visual parts of this TV. I've opened one of those green PCB which uh, plays vertically on this uh, bigger PCB. You can see here IC chips might contain some high quality gold bond wires. There is three PCB plates vertically. I think it is a good idea to take these PCBs off to see what is inside of these three PCBs. Unlike these AV ports here, this one does not contain any gold plating. These are rare AV ports which are behind of TV. And these are side AV ports for this TV. This is my solder bath which I made from CD-ROM and hard drive cases. This helps to detach solder parts more easily and now I'm going to take these three PCBs off. But before that, there is some analysis on the bottom layer of main board which needs to be detached first to not be contaminated with solder more than they are. To do so, I'm going to use a heating gun. Every PCB is removed from mainboard. I did same two pins. Afterwards, I checked for gold plating on AV pins, then I carried out silver testing with Schwarter solution, which both was negative. There isn't any gold and silver on the rear socket of this TV. So this port doesn't have any value to be kept. I've found 11 IC chips only on the main board itself. These quad IC chips usually yield 1 to 4 grams of gold per kilogram. Also there was some component on the board which was like transistors but with many legs. Maybe this is also kinda IC chips or bridge diet. Then I noticed some good quality gold plated pins in the plastic ports on the PCB and couple of MLCCs with tanned color. 
Let's check those vertical PCBs which been detached earlier. In this first one there is one deep and two quad IC chips and some gold bladed pins. In the second one, there is one medium sized quad IC chip and some small chips. Pins on this PCB have not been gold plated, but there is a SMD crystal oscillator with gold border which contains silver. And for third PCB, I've got some quad IC chips and one crystal oscillator, transistor and some gold plated pins. Also, there are two small brown PCB on the main board, which is usually contain crystal oscillator as a source for silver recovery. Now to make it more evident, I'm going to break plastic ports of pins. There it is. Here is our good quality gold plated pins. These pins are magnetic pins with nickel plating underneath the gold. To remove other pins from small PCBs, I'm going to use solder bath. Also, I do the same for hard drive pins. Here we go, this is some non-magnetic pins with brass as base alloy. And as you see here, this TV has a big transformer that's so cool to play around a bit with high voltage. I will keep this for my next projects. Besides, I saw something strange on this TV PCB. Is this kind of IC chip or so? I've already seen one of these. This thing is like a huge IC chip. I would be grateful if you say in comment what am I facing with. Anyway, let's talk about this blue guy's bit. These blue ceramic capacitors are good source for silver recovery. And another rectangular capacitor with red color is metal mica capacitor. All type of these capacitors has some silver, but this one has aluminum foil inside, so it doesn't have any value to us. Here there are three dedicated cathodic tubes for each lenses. I'm going to open cathodic tubes, well, I need to put a warning before doing that. Do not do this at home. These cathodic tubes contain toxic gases and may cause serious problems or even death if you inhale their gases. But fortunately I got film hood to do that. So why am I opening these tubes? I've seen some of the ceramic capacitors in some old CRT tubes and now I'm going to check these tubes for those. Some of those capacitors has palladium plating on their circular ceramic base, but they usually have a good silver content. Actually, these are high voltage ceramic capacitors. This color inside of these lenses reminds me RGB system, red, green and blue. I'm not sure maybe this is green and this one is blue, but interesting, they conduct all those color in the separate lenses and they come out and after reflecting from this mirror here they reflect it and place on this screen and they combine to form a picture according to the RGB system that's interesting and yeah I found it here is written red green and blue. To access cathodic tubes I had to take lenses off, so I started to unscrew them all. You know, this thing is crazy. There are three of them here and this stands for blue one. You can see every of those has its own dedicated 
magnetic field and cathodic tube. This cathodic tube, this cathodic tube potentially could have some palladium inside which needs to be checked. This is one of those lenses. What this lens could do to the cell phone flashlight is interesting. This can concentrate the light which can light up apartment more than 300 meters away. Probably this is useful for some laser projects. Besides there was some thick liquid behind the lenses. It seems was a liquid based on silicon compounds which is soluble in water and makes foams. I keep that to be used as a surfactant. Also there was two 20 watts speakers and a big sheet lens made of plastic at the front of a screen. I also keep this to do some fun solar projects like roasting some chickens. To open CRT tube first I detach PCB using a heating gun and then I broke the tube after opening the tube I realized there is not any internal capacitors. I did same for those three CRT tubes but find nothing. After checking more component from the TV I found there is a terminal for high voltage dividing which has an internal capacitor. The capacitor is probably mica aluminum capacitor which is rated for 35 kilovolts and 300 picofarad. To be conclude there isn't any pellet capacitor in this TV. To show you guys what I actually was seeking for I carried out silver test on one of those pellets. This pellet is from an old computer monitor. You can see bloody red color as the result. This is sign for presence of silver. I also process those big icy like components with sulfuric acid to open their packages. And after observing for gold bond buyers and maybe palladium and silver, I should say it was negative. There was couple of these transistor like components in them with copper heat sink, but there wasn't any gold bond wire on the silicon die. I've got couple of IC chips, MLCCs, blue ceramic capacitors from different PCBs which the TV components are among them. I'm going to process them for gold, silver and palladium in my next projects. So don't forget to subscribe to not miss a video. Leave a comment, let me know your idea. Until next project, see you next time.